Afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, thanks for being here. Appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys. Uh, Al Mills, lifelong Wilmingtonian, uh, born and raised north side of Wilmington. I uh, was actually, like Jeff, I was in college as well. Uh, and then my, my father, my father passed away. My father's uh, Hicks Anderson, right, who the, who the Hicks Center is named after. He passed away my freshman year, and my mother couldn't afford to send us back to college, my twin brother and I. And we, we went into the service, and I ended up getting stationed in Germany. And my brother went to Alaska, you know, and then within two months later, I was, I was in, I, I was in uh, the war. I was in the Gulf War. I was over in Iraq and in the middle of it. So I went in to get some college money, and, and, and then I ended up, I was in an artillery unit, uh, which is with the tanks. I was uh, on a, there was a, there's a vehicle, a forward unit that goes out and kind of does Recon kind of, okay, put the coordinates in, tell the tanks, this is where you guys shoot. Here's the coordinates. This is where it needs to go. So we were kind of, that was my unit. That was my my uh, my, my job working with the artillery, with the tanks, telling the tanks where to shoot. Uh, then it was, uh, it, it, it was different. It was, uh, my, my time in the war was, was very trying. We took uh, a lot of incoming, meaning uh, the enemy shooting at us, bombs coming towards us. There was a lot of roadside bombs. Uh, Ambushes as well, and the our big thing over there was was the mines, and and the children. They were they would use children as decoys over there. They would send children over there to to scout out to count how many people were there, that that kind of thing. Or sometimes even the kids had had bombs. In one one instance where I, we actually lost somebody in in my unit, one of the guys that went over with us, and it actually in in our platoon, you know, was uh, a a kid came in, and you know, and that was that was this that was the part that that uh. That, that still bothers me when, when, when the children were involved and, you know, I yeah. grew, growing up in a you know, household, my grandmother was the mother of the church and family was very involved in church, you know, so it was certain things that, that war had nothing to do with. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's very difficult at times to, to, you know, to, to make right with some of that stuff that, that we had to do there. You know, uh, one of the gentlemen said bad, bad things happen. And, and, and when you're there, bad things were happening. And it's, it's, it's not something that, that you can make right at, at that moment. And it, it, it takes years and years. And that, that's where that moral injury comes in because I, I know Al Mills is a good person deep down inside, but did Al Mills do some very horrible things to, that I wish I could take back? Yes. You know, and, I, that, and that's where the, the, that, that struggle comes with. And it, and it, it is a struggle, you know, and I, and I would definitely agree with the, the young man who just, just spoke, you know, that definitely do not – right off military. My, my son's in the military right now. He loves it. And it's, it's a great way to better your, better your life, you know, to go, to go get that college money, to go get you a house and, you know, start, start your, to, to get away from the negativity. You know, my, my, my son wanted to do it out of honor to me. And I, and it was the last thing I wanted was for my son, you know, I don't want you in. No, not definitely not right now. You know, with this, the president that we had, I, I just thought it was going to be war after war. And I was just like, no, you can't go in. Not right now. But he wanted to, he said, dad, you always talk about what the military did for you, how it made you such a stronger person, how, how you were so disciplined, time management, and just being so on top of everything and trying to be prepared for everything. And that, that's the good stuff that I, get, that I got from the military. And you got, I got friends all around this world. There, there's not a place, like not a city in this, in this union that I can't go and I, that I know someone or contact someone. And that, that, those are the great parts of the military. Well, like I said, that, that downside, that more injury, that, that PTSD that, that we struggle with, that many of us do struggle with, it, 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 it's real. And it's, uh, it's, it's very damaging at times. And I said, and said, and for me, like I said, the hard part for me was, was doing things to, to people that, that I, I don't think had to die. You know, I just, you know they, they, they died. We had to die because this was the order that they gave. But did they have to God die because of what they were doing? No, you know, it was just these were the orders that were given and we had to follow the orders. But were they doing something that, that I really thought they, you know, were they threatening my life? I, I, I don't know, you know. But when the order says, okay, go in there and shoot, it, it's going there and shoot. It's not going there and, you know, Think about what, what you're about to do right now. No, it's, it's not time for that. You know, when bullets are flying, there's no time to be thinking. So, but at the end, I said, it, 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 it's a struggle and, and you, you can't get help. Like I said, the, like it, it, it's an injury. It, it is. It, 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 it's, it's not a death sentence. It's, it's not something, but it is something that, 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 we, that we struggle with daily. And, and, it's, it's, and I, I and living in the city and, and I, 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 I see the comparison, you know, where, you know, where there's a lot of gun violence in the inner city. There's a lot of trauma, you know, and, and being a licensed master social worker, I deal with it on both ends. Like I said, I struggle with PTSD daily in my own life, but then I, I work with clients who, you know, I had, I had a, one of my clients, two of my clients actually killed this summer, you know, 
and then seeing their family working with still working with their families and, and the trauma that they go through. You know, I can relate that. I mean, and, and hearing the little brother say every time I pass this corner right now, I, I, I'm sad, you know, so how do you go from making this just a, just a regular little kid who's standing at his bus stop to, okay, I can't even stand at this corner because this is where my brother got killed or my cousin got killed. So those are daily reminders that that's a part of that moral injury. So whether you guys want to label it that or not, you know, everyone kind of deals with this stuff. And, it, and that, that's the trauma. And there's a lot of trauma going in the, in, in the inner city right now, especially in Wilmington with uh, the high number of shootings that we have, the gang violence and everything else. So it's, it, it, it's a lot, you know, but I'm, I'm, I'm here to say that there is hope and there, there's a way away from these guns and drugs and, you know, not even putting ourselves into those situations because it, it, it's, it, looks, it looks really easy on TV. Okay, you just shoot somebody and, that, and that's it. But the, the, those, the nightmares that, you know, the thoughts about it and, the, you know, that stuff, that stuff haunts you and that, it, it's real. Those nightmares are, are, are real. Those flashbacks are real. There, there's times when I wake up and, you know, my, 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 you know, my wife would tell you, I, I think I'm in the desert. You know, I'm, you know, ceiling fans would bother me, the ceiling fans, everything, you know. So it, it, it is, it, it's, it's a different day, but at the end of the day, like I said, you should just make the best of it. And, you know, I, I was able to make a good life for myself because of the time I spent in the army, like I said, with the VA home loans, the college loans, was able to go get my master's degree. So, it, I mean, there, there's some great stuff to it, but the downside of war, you know, it's something that no one prepared for it. And, and my thought, no, in my mind, to me, I, I, I wish I hadn't did some of the things that I, that I, that I was asked to do. I won't say I was forced to do it, but I was asked to do it. And I, and I did some things that, that I'm not, I'm not, extremely proud of you know but thank you guys for listening and you know i i you know truly and i i hope you guys get something from this if, if anything what i want to leave you guys with is, is the trauma man you know go go get some help and when, when our buddies are getting shot you know i there's plenty of us there there's a va that, that we can go to and talk about pain that we're still dealing with from 20 years ago but you guys or some of you guys are dealing with this stuff right now your brother's being killed your, your friend's being killed so go get some help talk to some counselors man we're, we're, we're out there. Seek, seek some seek some help. Talk to somebody. Talk to your your uncles, your aunts, any, anybody that, that that you know, a teacher. Reach out to someone. You know, don't try to go through this all alone if you're struggling with because grief is a very tricky process. You know, and anger is a part of grief. You know, so they kill your buddy, you want to retaliate, but that's just a part of the grieving process. You, you're very mad. You're going through something. You want to do something back. You know, so but try to go get the help that you guys need. Like I said, trauma is really real, and it, it, it's happening a lot in our community. And, and thank you guys for listening, and I, and I appreciate the journey that you're on. And while you're there, make the most of this time. So when you guys are you know, ready to come home, you can come home and, and make those changes. Be the, make, do, do those things to make your family proud. Man. Make your big, be that big, big brother that they can look up to and say, that's my brother right now. And they can see you doing positive things. And I, I, I've seen many kids come out of Ferris and do great things. But I see other kids come back out, and next time I see them, they're sitting in Gare to Hill, you know. So you guys got to make that change, and it's in you, and I know you guys can do it, you know. Thank you for listening.